Hi, I'm Steve Miller. Call me Slim. And this is the uh, Slim Market Week. It's a look back at what happened in the financial markets in the past week. And a look forward at what might happen in the next week. And hopefully lots of great ideas and opportunities for you throughout this show. Well, the stock market had a very choppy week, ending the week with modest losses. Monday had a strong start as news came out that the, the Pfizer vaccine would be available uh, by sometime late November as they apply for emergency use. And ECB Lagarde came out and said that they were going to remain accommodative uh, because of COVID-19. Yes, they're having a massive spike there. And just in France, in one day, uh, yesterday, they had over 40,000 new cases. So it is really raging there in Europe. Uh, there were doubts uh, about the U.S. rescue plan coming, so that early uptick on Monday brought some very, very big selling. As a matter of fact, the range was over 80 points, as there was a really strong selling that came in that day, uh, as uh, we keep hearing rumor after rumor about what's going on with the rescue plan. Tuesday and Wednesday both uh, saw upside attempts fail. Uh, one was because McConnell warned that a big deal won't pass the Senate. Uh, and uh, Goldman Sachs also came out on Wednesday and they said the stimulus deal was not likely before election. But then the president comes out and he says his desire is to get uh, a very big deal. Um, he wants a bigger deal than anybody wants. And uh, of course, that's a bunch of crap because all he wants to do is get votes. Uh, and he's really not been in favor of a big deal. Uh, and uh, the, uh, his, uh, uh, Mnuchin, who's been talking to Pelosi all of this time, and they are talking on a regular basis, uh, has been working with him on a, a smaller deal. So and the, uh, uh, the Senate has been trying to pass a much smaller deal uh, but that isn't likely to be able to go anywhere also. Thursday, um, Pelosi came out and said, well, negotiations were just about there. So, of course, the market did have a better day. Uh, and, uh, of course, what she didn't tell you really was that she was talking about the language around COVID and, uh, and testing and those things, and they're really very far apart when it comes to everything else. So traders really had it wrong, but they still rallied on Thursday. Uh, s and had a good reversal from the downside uh, of about 45 points from its low and ended up with small gains on the day on Thursday. Uh, the debate then came as everybody was focused on that. And it was a much calmer, and I doubt that either side won any votes at all uh, because so, everybody is so well entrenched. And with uh, 47 million votes already cast, well, it just shows you uh, that uh, people have already made up their mind. Uh, maybe Biden did lose a few votes uh, when he did said, I will end fossil fuels. Uh, and there were some states, of course, that might have cringed uh, on that. So I would say overall, of course, a, a much better debate. And uh, the moderator did a very good job. Kudos to her. And uh, overall, probably a non-event. Friday, well, the upside tried, they tried it again uh, on more stimulus hope, but Intel was weighing on the tech stocks, and the NASDAQ has been heavy. Uh, uh, analysts downgrade Intel after earnings, uh, and the problems are that, well, earnings were pretty much in line, but their margins are really moving lower, and they're losing to the competition, especially to NVIDIA and uh, AMD. So uh, the stock, which we have had as negative, continues to move down like a 10% decline uh, in uh, uh, Intel on Friday. Um, 
the uh, I want you to go and watch the video that I did on Thursday in stock sectors where I do analysis on the mega caps, the, the stocks that make up 54% of the NASDAQ. Uh, you're going to be just fascinated by that analysis. It's in stock sectors. It's for members, level 2, 3, and 4. So if you're not a member, do become a member, and you'll be able to see that great video. And, and there we did uh, warn on the Intel pattern uh, saying that, you know, it wasn't really great, and it was in the sell zone, and now it collapses here today. Here on Friday, also, um, that uh, a president came out uh, just a, a little while ago, and that turned the market lower, where he said uh, Pelosi is making the deal harder, and she's not giving one inch. Well, okay, the blame game is on, and uh, nothing, of course, is getting done. Probably should hope for uh, more of this gridlock uh, starting in January of next year may not come. And we are entering pre-election week. And it's hard to see really any uh, significant market moves as we come into this week. Probably stay range bound, but Thursday night, Friday, is is likely to be a pretty big day. Um, it's it's a huge earnings week coming anyway. And uh, on ten twenty nine uh, is when after the close we get many of the major techs reporting earnings. And I got a feeling that overnight uh, we're going to see some pretty big moves. It's probably the biggest action of the week that we're going to see. And uh, uh, when you watch my video, you will see that I'm really not overall optimistic that these earnings reports are going to be helping these stocks. So do go watch that video. So we have to really start moving our focus to post-election. And uh, I want to do that uh, right now as I put up uh, a, a one little graph for you to see, uh, as uh, I think this is really important. I've talked about stock market valuations, of course, a number of times. And I think it is important to be focused on that as we look at this chart. Thanks to Guru Focus uh, for this updated chart. What we're looking at here is the total market cap to GDP, the ratio. Uh, and it is now at trading over 180%. This is historic. The, the stock market has never, ever been this overvalued. It's just beyond our comprehension that you could have this kind of a market. And there is, in my opinion, huge exposure, risk exposure, that um, that as longer-term holders, investors, 401ks, IRAs, all those, we really have to be conscious of this as we get uh, into this post-election time. Uh, and I'll talk next week more about what I think is likely to happen based on who wins the presidency. But just look at this chart. Uh, does you know? Does it matter who really wins? Uh, I don't think so. I think that uh, uh, there is a, a large adjustment coming, uh, and uh, that's really either way, no matter who wins. Uh, and we'll just call it. The, some people are calling it the Great Reset. And when you look at this, I do believe that there is a major reset coming in the stock market uh, as uh, we look at that. That is a very, very significant chart. And uh, I would say that we really, when we're looking at that, you know, if you're hoping that, you know, more another four years of Trump means another four years of stock markets being elevated, I think you really got to think again. All right. So for the week, here we are at midday uh, as we do this show. The stock market is, is posting small losses. S&P is about 1%. Uh, the NASDAQ down about 2%, the worst index. Russell, um, still the strongest of the index, is down less than 1% uh, for the week. 30-year bonds down about 2.5%, and the 10-year yields up about 10 basis points. That hits our targets that we gave uh, for the short-term view last week and that we have been giving for uh, the downside uh, in the bond market. Uh, we'll show, of course, uh, much of this in the short-term view coming up. Gold market down about $6. Uh, it uh, missed our target on the upside by only about $4. We were talking about uh, an area of about 1940. It got to 1936. Silver stronger, up about 25 cents. The dollar, exceptionally weak. That also moves down to our target for the week. We had a fantastic week in the short-term view. So don't miss our next short-term view, which is just coming up in a few minutes. Oil market, well, that's down 50 cents uh, on the week uh, as uh, it gets a pullback uh, based on the fact that they expected a, a bigger draw than it actually had. 
Uh, but overall, we're feeling pretty good about the oil market. We do think that there's another upside move coming in there. I'm going to talk, of course, more about that, but I can't stop talking about this. Uh, total market cap to GDP, keep that in your mind. Uh, the, uh, for uh, the following week, in case it's a little slow and you need something to do and you're not an AskSlim member, please go to AskSlim.com and explore that. Uh, subscribe, uh, share, follow, uh, all of those things. If you're new, go to the site, become a free member. That's how you can start getting a little taste of the things we do. Uh, the archive for this show will then be available to you. Uh, if you're watching it on YouTube, to subscribe to the channel because we put something out almost every day now. Click that notification bell and it'll let you know when we do put a post out. Uh, and do like this video. Give it a thumbs up. Uh, and also, if you're watching in the clips, go in there and give those a thumb up also. also. Twitter, follow us on Ask Slim. Uh, lots of good stuff we post out there. Uh, write to Matt at AskSlim.com for membership info and questions on our huge offerings of uh, education and analysis. That is the opening of the show. Uh, and now we're going to get into the short-term view for the coming week. Uh, we had a great week. Um, the you know we really shoot for about two to one correct. So 60, 65 percent, 70 percent is a great week uh, as we rate ourselves on uh, how the patterns shape up, uh, how support and resistances act, what our targets are. So and we're pretty conservative. We do rate ourselves pretty um, conservatively. This week, 90 to 95% accuracy. We're not ever going to get better than that, I'll tell you, because we can't possibly do 100%. But this was really, really a good week. Um, light crude, we thought that it would be railing a little bit and then turn down. We thought it would get over 41.65, which it did. And now it's having a little bit of a correction. I'll show you that. Uh, the gold market, we said, would be moving up the next two weeks, testing the 1940 to 1967 area. Well, got very close to 1940. We'll call that pretty much of a bullseye. <laughs> The uh, dollar index, we thought that it would uh, move kind of a little bit to the upside, but then start to move down. Any kind of an upside, we thought, would set up a downside move, and uh, it really acted pretty perfectly in that regard. Um, the uh, It just didn't have quite as much of a rally as we expected. Uh, the bond market, we thought, would be ch chugging down for the next two weeks. We had a target uh, below uh, 172. It did get there. Uh, and uh, for the S&P 500, we thought it would come down, uh, make a low sometime around midweek, and then begin to turn up. That's almost exactly uh, what it did. It nailed our target, which was 34.18. It actually got as low as 34.15, and then began to move up. So uh, a really, really good week uh, as we look at the uh, uh, as we look pa at the past. And now, of course, uh, what do we do as we move forward? I'm going to zip through these very, very quickly this time. Uh, so get ready if you're taking notes uh, as we switch over uh, and we look at the light crude market first. This is light crude. That is our cycle analysis. If you want to learn about cycle analysis, go to AskSlim.com. There's nowhere you can learn more about it. These are cycle brackets, and what we're looking for is a low to be formed, as we said right in here. The lows areas uh, just under 40, maybe down to about 39 potentially over the next couple few days and then moving up. You could see the next rising phase right over here. That's what we expect to be happening, and we would expect it will we get over this area of about uh, close to one, close to 42 uh, sometime in the next couple of weeks. So that's a look at light crude. Here is the gold market, and you could see that right there. Uh, and uh, again, we have our cycle analysis in here. Make sure you go to our website to learn about cycle analysis. Here you could see the rhythms in here very, very clearly. This is called a bullish cycle right over here, basing cycle, positive configuration, positive translation. All of those uh, terms are available in our glossary on, in our workshop. And now we were pointing for it to get up here to about 1940, maybe 1967. We're still saying that is likely coming, potentially up to the 1967 level. But if it gets under 1844, that's bad. It would be a breakdown. And then the rally that we're looking for would be over 
and we think that that would be the end of it. So right now we're looking for an upward bias in the gold market and uh, you will uh, probably um, see us turn if it gets under 1844 pretty quickly on that. Dollar index, dollar sign DXY. You can see that right over here. This is a breakdown. Uh, when it got underneath this key level right over here, it's broken under that support level there. And we see the target down over here in the next uh, two, two and a half, three weeks to sub 92 uh, there. Uh, that's really the um, really broad uh, uh, decline and declining area with all of these uh, downside uh uh, cycle phases pushing right over there and that nesting area. So the dollar we are still negative on. We expect to see significantly lower prices. The bond market forward slash ZB. This is forward slash ZB and you can see that the beautiful cycles uh, as they formed in here. These are called minor thirds. We're in the third of the minor thirds right over here with the dominant pushing down just like it did right over here. Big down, big down, momentum negative. You can see that and it really points to uh, a decline coming in here of uh, some significance and that that's probably ending in a very, very brief period of time. Our target 71.30 to 70.30. There's your supports coming in right over there. So we'll expect it to come down a little bit more and then try to get a bounce. So now we're going to move into the S&P 500. Um, the, uh, if you want to get the in-depth uh, look at the markets, then uh, I think that it would really help you to become a member. Uh, by uh, subscribing uh, and become a free member. If you have not been, of course, uh, follow us on YouTube. Uh, give us a thumbs up on the on our videos. And if you like this, uh, 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 if you like this, give us a thumbs up <laughs> and uh, subscribe to our channel. And uh, for Twitter, uh, follow us at Ask Slim. Uh, for more information and info, any questions on our huge offerings of education and analysis, uh, please do write to Matt at AskSlim.com. He'll uh, really help you with that. We have amazing things that are coming up that are new that you have never seen anywhere before. So uh, write to Matt at AskSlim.com. All right, short-term view uh, for the stock market, SPX. Now, you can get our full analysis if you go to Future Speak on Wednesdays where we do a real deep dive into 24 different futures contracts. So here is, uh, whoops, <laughs> that's funny. Here is the S&P 500, SPX, uh, and uh, you can see in here that, as soon as I give it to you, that uh, we have a more complex structure in here. We were looking for a low here to form at the 3418 area. That is what we got. And now uh, we are entering a period in the next day or so. Now this could break under here to 3378 first. We don't really have a good anchor point, but then we think it's gonna be rallying up here into the election day period right over there. Of course, in the beginning of the show, I talked about the uh, earnings that are coming out on 1029 and uh, that could stop this upside move or accelerate the upside move. If the election news is good, well, could blow out up over here if they like it. If it gets uh, underneath whatever low we make over here that's going to be really negative so it's really hard to make a big call right now except that the bias does looks like it's going to be slightly to the upside but we have no anchor yet in here so we're going to just uh, look for the potential for a test of that high at about 35.44 as something that is realistic uh, and uh, if it starts to trade weaker in here and longer to the downside uh, it's going to set up scenarios that are really not very good. So we're going to call for a, a market that tries to make a bottom in here and uh, then begins to move up uh, into at least the next several days in here and maybe more uh, as we get into the election time. Hard to make a pretty big call. You want to learn about the cycle analysis, go to AskSlim.com. And uh, that is it for the show. Uh, we're going to uh, give you uh, a much, much uh, broader look at what we think uh, is happening in the uh, pre-election week, uh, in the election week, once we get there uh, next Friday. So uh, have a uh, really, really great time uh, this week uh, because it's likely to be a little bit slower. And I want you to be amazingly careful because it is so crazy out there. And I'm always wishing you Great trading.